If you're a fan of Big Fish TV, there's good news and great news. The good news is you won't have to see Big Fish reruns anymore. The great news is we have a new show and a new mission. I'm editor Todd Masson. And I'm Captain C.T. Williams. For many years, I've spent time on television trying to show you better ways to catch fish. But television has its limits. At the same time, I spent 18 years as editor of the state's largest outdoor publication. And when it comes to information as timely as where fish are biting, print falls short as well. Both of us feel that with today's technology and instant access to information, there's a huge gap and what anglers can find to help them have more productive time on the water. So I got together and we developed a plan to get you the best information possible. And boy, what a plan we have. A bit ambitious, but I think it's gonna change the fishing world for everyone and revolutionize it for some. We truly intend to make this and ultimatefishfinder.com the most important fishing tool you ever use. The products you buy right now with marked hot spots on a map have one big downfall. Spots on the map don't move, fish of course do. We plan to tell you exactly where the fish are biting today so you can have success tomorrow. I said I want this to become a revolutionary new tool for you to catch fish and I mean that. And this show and ultimatefishfinder.com are just the beginning. We're going to continue the Thursday Fox 8 news in the evening, Big Fish Report. We're going to add to that on the Fox 8 morning news, the Fox 8 Fish Finder. Add to that Bob Breck and his Friday evening fishing forecast and all of a sudden Fox 8 becomes your fishing authority. In addition to that, we got LASpecs.com which gives you all the detailed information you need to have success with the most challenging fish in Louisiana waters, the speckled trout. And don't forget on Saturdays right after Ultimate Fish Finder TV to tune into ESPN 1350 radio right here in New Orleans for my radio show, Speaking of Specs. That's with Don Dubuque. Add to that a monthly article in Martian Bayou that's going to look forward each month into the places you might be able to find fish. And we've put a heck of a package making good fishing information available to you 24-7, 365. Along with how and where to catch more fish, we'll continue to provide you with Chef Tenny Flynn's recipes to turn those fillets into perfection on the plate. So Ultimate Fish Finder TV and .com and LASpecs.com will take you from catch to cook. We truly plan to revolutionize the way you enjoy your fishing experience. Enough said. Let's get started with the new show. We're going to take you down to Venice with Captain Brandon Carter to learn some of his hot spots and his hot techniques. Then we're going to head up the river out of Shell Beach with Captain Mark Munson to the Bay LY area, which has been on fire lately. We'll give you a preview of fishing areas that should stay hot over the next couple of weeks. And then we'll head down to the French Quarter where Chef Tenny Flynn's cooking Parmesan encrusted trout. So come on, let's go find some fish. The advantages of fishing out of Venice, Louisiana are numerous. The biggest one being you can fish Venice and almost anywhere else in southeast Louisiana. The river delta marshes are often productive, but an angler can easily go east towards Breton Sound or west towards Grand Isle for great speckled trout and redfish action. Knowing where to go and when can be a challenge for many anglers, Captain Brandon Carter has a lot of experience fishing Venice. The Real Shot Guide service owner has a great reputation for loading the boat with quality fish. Brandon started the day at the well-known Sandy Point rig known as the Green Monster. This is just one rig in the area southwest of Venice. The numerous rigs here are famous for great summer speckled trout fishing. An early dawn cast produced the first keeper, but it wasn't a speckled trout. You gotta pay extra for those, don't you? Uh -huh. Little bonus fish right there. Now the specs may have been late for breakfast, but it didn't take long for them to come to the table. Oh, you know y'all are spoiled when you when you call a, a 14, 15 inch fish a, a baby. That's when you fish in Venice. There you go. Flip him in. That, yeah, that's a little better. Another nice one. I, I'm not gonna say they're never on the bottom, but we haven't been catching them on the bottom lately. Uh, most of the time, they're you know even even when they're down there, you, you know we catch them on like say a half ounce or three quarter ounce or something like that down on the bottom. But they're normally about two feet up off the bottom. They see the shrimp and they go down and grab it. Now the pompano, there you go. That's a nice pompano there, man. Look at that. But these these fish, they kind of a lot of times they'll move around the rig, um, and you'll you'll you know you'll you'll catch four or five, and then they'll stop for a little while, and you may look up and there may be a boat on the other side over catching them, and. Uh, then a few minutes later, they, they come back and you're catching them again. But ideally, you want them to stay where you're at. That's why I like to keep as much, as much bait in the water as possible. Well, I, don't like to, I always try to keep some extra poles rigged and stuff, so, so that way if somebody gets cut off, just grab another one and, get, and keep that shrimp in the water, because the more shrimp you got kept in the water, the more you're going to hold those fish right here to us. And even when the fish come up and they start, they start spitting shrimp up on the deck and stuff like that, I, I grab those shrimp and throw them in the water and just and keep keep them basically chummed up and keep them held right to our spot right here. 
And that's the other thing too, is I like to have everybody, you know, people, oh, I don't want to get too close or anything like that. No, I want everybody throwing in the same spot and get those fish, the, the tighter you can get that school balled up, the more aggressive they're going to feed. Just let him flop over the side, I'll get him. Hey, that's a trout, that's the kind we're looking for. <laughs> nice little... <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> nice little pompano bite this morning. Go ahead, Jim. Alley -oop. Go ahead. Don't be scared. I fished these rigs enough to where I, I got I know where the sweet spots are that I'll try before I before I leave. And that's what we're looking for right there. I'm not sure what this is. It bit kind of funny. It might be a pompano. That's what it is, a pompano. Ah, here lately they've been they've been kind of suspended in that that eight to twelve foot range, which is you know that's that's the they're either two foot off the bottom or they're they're down about eight to twelve feet is where you normally catch them at. We had over four is what I'm thinking. I bet you a mackerel cut you, yep mackerel cut your sinker off. The specs and pompano rang a dinner bell for the Spanish mackerel so much so Captain Carter felt it was time to go. Well, that wasn't as good as I was hoping for. Nothing's better than boiled seafood, spiced just right. Uh, yeah. And Louisiana fish fry products makes it easy to boil right every time. Can't get enough. Grab a bag. There's nothing to mix. Just pour and boil. Aw, oh, now you're cooking. Crawfish, crab, or shrimp. With Louisiana fish fry products, you got boiling down easy. Oh, that's the way I like it. Martian Bayou Magazine offers sportsmen in southeast Louisiana late-breaking information, great tips and how-tos, outdoor news, entertaining articles, and hot spots. The magazine covers some of Louisiana's best outdoor fun and gives enthusiasts the inside scoop from the area's top-notch fishing and hunting guides. Pick up a copy of Martian Bayou at your favorite sporting goods store. And if you can't find a copy, send an email to martianbayou at charter.net and let Chris know southeast Louisiana's best outdoor news is found in Martian Bayou. New Orleans' first dry stack boat storage facility, Seabrook Harbor, can accommodate 200 boats up to 40 feet long. We are located at the Industrial Canal, less than one mile from Lake Pontchartrain and the Seabrook Bridge. Our full service facilities feature a fuel dock with gas and diesel, a ship store with snacks, tackle and more, and Seabrook Harbor sells live shrimp in season. Additional amenities include a fish cleaning station and showers. Seabrook Harbor, New Orleans' premier dry stack boat storage facility, where we do more than just store. The Pen Conker is the most technologically advanced spinning reel built. Good thing this drag makes noise. You wouldn't even know it's going out. Smooth HT100 drag under the heaviest loads. I am amazed how smooth that drag is. Patented one-piece machine gearbox. One-of-a-kind easy access system for a lifetime of painless maintenance. What a home run. Pen. Legendary performance. Brandon made the call to make the long run to the east side of the river, into the main pass rig blocks. There, he set up on a structure known as the Noisy Rig and got to work. Oh, nice fish. Another nice one. Red fish. Oh! Here, I got the net right here if you want a netting, never mind. The rigs out here, uh, you get deep a lot quicker here. I mean, it drops off pretty fast out here. I mean, right here we're in 14 feet of water, but just this next couple right here in 25, 30, 35, 40 feet of water. And uh, I think the water just stays a little bit cooler here. Plus, you got all the outlets off of the, off of the east side of the river all coming out right here. And the water just tends to, to stay a little bit cooler. Like right now, we're at, we're at 85 degrees. When we left the west side over there a little while ago, we were about 87, 88 degrees. And just the, those couple of degrees like that will keep these fish biting a little bit later in the morning. Plus, we got cloud cover today. Well, I didn't want to run all the way over here from where we were at, but it looks like it's starting to pay off a little. I adjusted the stop about 18 inches. Haven't had a bite on this cork yet in the first cast with it. Went with the new depth. Nice trout. You know, the last time I made one of those around the world trips where I started off on the west side like that, I came right here and, and did the same thing. Is that a big white? That's a nice white trout. Nice one. 
even these you know these nice these thick fish like this are male they're croaking yeah he said there's some females down there too we just hadn't got to them yet got him nice chunks not huge but nice nice chunks yeah Get the, get the net for you like a good guide. <laughs> Another nice chunk. Boy, he broke the hook off right there. That's a nice fish too. You're not going to go to the same spot every single day and catch the fish like we have in years past. You know, this, this like today where we're catching these fish at, I guarantee you I'll come here tomorrow and I probably won't even catch a fish. I'll come here two, three days from now and all of a sudden the fish will be back. And you just got to be mobile. You got to have in your mind a game plan, of a set of, of spots that you know you can fish under the wind conditions, weather conditions or whatever. Be mobile. Hit it, you know, give a spot 15, 20 minutes. If it ain't happening, hit the road and, and get on something different. Got to, the thing about out here is you'll come out on these rigs and you might fish 10 structures and not literally not have a bite. And then you pull up to the, to the right one, and then bam, there's, there's your 100 fish. We got another fish on the other side of the boat, too. Got another double. Yep, we had Pompano in the morning and uh, trout around 11. So it's been wonderful. Oh, oh we got look this. at this. Look at that. Look at this. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's all right. Well, uh, you know what, Cliff? He may not be 12 inches anymore. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> get a Man. filet out of him. Okay. Here, hand him here. I'll get him. Good morning, honey. Not today. You are not going fishing today! Ugly Stick, America's strongest, most sensitive rod. The Trilene 100% professional grade fluorocarbon from Berkeley is remarkably clear. It has little to no memory and is extremely abrasion resistant. But most importantly, it's the most impact resistant fluorocarbon you can buy, which means you'll hear a lot more Woo! 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 Woo and a lot less. Ah, what? Ah. Trilene fluorocarbon from Berkeley. <laughs> Woo! For anglers who want to catch more fish. Power bait from Berkeley looks, moves, and smells more like the real thing. And since it tastes more like the real thing, fish bite and hold on longer, up to 18 times longer than other artificials, giving you Woo! more time to set the hook, which means you'll be hearing Woo! Woo! a lot more often. Woo! Power bait from Berkeley. Woo! What you need to catch more fish. I like it. Nothing's better than boiled seafood. Spiced just right. Oh, uh, yeah. And Louisiana fish fry products makes it easy to boil right every time. Can't get enough. Grab a bag. There's nothing to mix. Just pour and boil. Aw, oh, now you're cooking. Crawfish, crab, or shrimp. With Louisiana fish fry products, you got boiling down easy. Oh, that's the way. Captain Brandon Carter was a great experience. We headed initially to the west, fished the Sandy Point rigs, but a whole lot of teeth moved us out of that area. We had to go across the river to the main pass area. Well, you know, I, I, I noticed that uh, along with a lot of fish, I saw some of the teeth, the, uh, the Spanish mackerel and all, but, but something with a little mouth called a pompano. I saw y'all caught a lot of those. And I gotta tell you, I don't remember my phone ringing before or after that trip. Well, you know, CT, I'll, I'll probably get a lot better at that. <laughs> you probably won't. <laughs> Well, one of the other things I noticed was that he uses sliding cork, something I think uh, that, that I use a lot and, and really believe in, but is, is largely underutilized. Yeah, it's very underutilized, and in fact, uh, I got Brandon on camera showing us exactly how he ties his uh, sliding cork so anglers out there can put it to use. Basically, uh, it's, a, it's just a, it's a string stop, and I'll, I'll pull that, 
the the uh, the string will pull off of this little plastic piece and then you cinch it down onto the line position that however deep you want to fish that's your little stopper bead and then i'll put a bigger bead on there to, to you know for, for sliding against the uh, and stopping against the uh the cork and use a little bit heavier of a sinker than what you think you need for the current because you want to you want that bait to punch down there and stay there and keep it keeps you keeps your cork sitting upright all right we got our our string stop our little bead stop a bigger bead stop to butt up against the top of the popping cork run your line through the center of the stem of the popping cork not don't pull the stem out put it through and then plate, peg it actually run it through the center of the stem and then below that is a one ounce sinker and some people will actually put a uh, a bead right here for uh you know for because it'll it'll actually beat against the bottom of the cork but um i didn't have time to do that so i just put a um a swivel 30 pound leader about you know a foot to 18 inches and a number four treble hook and then from there i'm gonna get my depth set my depth slide the string off of the little peg pull the two end pieces and there you go it stops and sometimes I'll just kind of leave a little bit of a tag on there to kind of get makes it a little bit more visible but like right there that's probably about five and a half six feet and all you do is just grab it slide it up the string and now we have about a probably about an eight foot leader now and what's going to happen is, is when I throw it out there, the sinker's going to sink down, but the cork's going to float up. And it's going to float up, hit that, and stop. And now I got a eight foot. I'm fishing a popping cork eight foot, de eight feet deep. And see, Tia, sliding cork is valuable in an area where the fish are holding above the bottom, not on the bottom, not up top. You want to hold your bait in that mid depth and keep that bait right in front of their faces. Yeah, structure. You know, you can even use it as a popping cork. You can rig it shallow. You can use it for pretty much any way you'd fish with a cork, and and it's so versatile. It's, it's probably a better way to go than just a popping cork. But all right, from from uh, from Venice to to Breton Sound. Let's jump in a boat with Captain Mark Munson. He's been fishing down at the Long Rocks, the Mr. Go area, uh, uh, Bay Elwa, and catching a lot of fish. No doubt about it. Let's go. On any given morning, you'll find Campos Marina and Shell Beach hopping with charter captains. While there are several marinas in the area, over 90% of the charter fishing services choose the Campo family. Great service, friendly people, and a generous bait count makes starting the day easy. Captain Mark Munson is one of those captains. Owner of First Cast Guide Service, Mark is well known for his knowledge and ability to catch fish from Lake Bourne to Point of La Hache. With marina owner Robbie Campo, we jumped in Mark's boat and headed out to fish Bay Elwha. Feels good. <laughs> what it is, I don't know, but it feels good. Nice trout. Probably going wrong. Two, three. Well, schooling. Well, okay. Yeah, that's going to turn the piece in. There you go. Good job. Acting, acting troutish. Here you go. Good. Coming up. Nice. More better. More better. More better. Like this. Back up, rock up, rock up. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come up. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. Back of trout. Oh, come on. That's Blackie's son. He's going to be all right. Don't you worry. You check it. Luck. You check it all you Luck. want. You check it after I get this in. <laughs> oh, this is a good spot, man. Not bad. All right. Hey, you don't. He, he, Good spot. I don't believe. There you go. Oh, no. uh -huh. Hey, yeah. hey, Robbie. Throw him that way. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna look. About, <laughs> tell you what, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let Mark toss him. Toss him that way. Oh, that's the way I like it. Nothing's better than boiled seafood, spiced just right. Uh, yeah. And Louisiana fish fry products makes it easy to boil right every time. Can't get enough. Grab a bag. There's nothing to mix. Just pour and boil. Aw, oh, now you're cooking. Crawfish, crab, or shrimp. With Louisiana fish fry products, you got boiling down easy. Oh, that's the way I like it. Ow. 
Marsh and Bayou Magazine offers sportsmen in southeast Louisiana late-breaking information, great tips and how-tos, outdoor news, entertaining articles, and hot spots. The magazine covers some of Louisiana's best outdoor fun and gives enthusiasts the inside scoop from the area's top-notch fishing and hunting guides. Pick up a copy of Marsh and Bayou at your favorite sporting goods store. And if you can't find a copy, send an email to martianbayou at charter.net and let Chris know Southeast Louisiana's best outdoor news is found in Marsh and Bayou. New Orleans' first dry stack boat storage facility, Seabrook Harbor, can accommodate 200 boats up to 40 feet long. We are located at the Industrial Canal, less than one mile from Lake Pontchartrain and the Seabrook Bridge. Our full-service facilities feature a fuel dock with gas and diesel, a ship store with snacks, tackle, and more, and Seabrook Harbor sells live shrimp in season. Additional amenities include a fish cleaning station and showers. Seabrook Harbor, New Orleans' premier dry stack boat storage facility, where we do more than just store. The Pen Conquer is the most technologically advanced spinning reel built. Good thing this drag makes noise. You wouldn't even know it's going out. Smooth HT100 drag under the heaviest loads. I am amazed how smooth that drag is. Patented one-piece machine gearbox. One-of-a-kind easy access system for a lifetime of painless maintenance. What a home run. Pen. Legendary performance. Going as fast as I can. Coming over your shoulder, right into your TV. Boom! Boom. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. What kind of bait you using? Live shrimp. Live shrimp. Where'd you get that live shrimp from? The one and only, Buddy Campos. Come on in, baby. Boom! Beautiful fish. Welcome to the first cast charter. It's your last stop. Coming up top, even. Getting an attitude, even. Here we go. See where we get. You find your your platforms with your well heads around them. Fish the angles of the platforms that make basically a point where the current's coming around it. If you know where the shell structures are, the shell pads around it, that's a definite plus. Uh, when you get there, don't just throw in one spot. You know, try around it, move around it a little bit. Try a cork, try a cork deep, try it on the bottom. Uh, usually about mid-September, we start getting those little fronts start coming through. Water temperature starts changing, the bait starts moving in a little bit, and then the fish move into the marsh, and then you're going to be in all your typical winter, not winter, but fall to winter type stuff in the Biloxi Marsh area. Water. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, if you're looking to come fish with Mark Munson, first cast charters, there's the information right there at the bottom of your screen. Give him a call. Come on out and do some fishing. I'll tell you what, been knowing the man a while. Outstanding in every way. So there you go. It's real easy to fish Bay Elwha, the Mr. Go, and catch a lot of fish. Robbie, if they come down to Campos Marina, what can they find here? Oh, you can get your live bait, you can get your uh, bag down, you get your gas, your ice. Um, you get back in. We got uh, we got a fillet guy here, Frankie Fillet. Hey, fillet doing, you guys? fish. And uh, well, you sit in the shade and you get them cleaned up, and you go on home. Don't have to do nothing. Just come on out of camp, folks. Man, what a great operation the Campos have down there in Shell Beach. And you know, Captain Mark Munson is an absolute blast to fish with. And you know, he's currently building a lodge out there in Shell Beach. Well, it's beautiful. It's going up fast and it looks like it's going to be just outstanding. Yeah, it's probably going to be done before this actual transition kicks in. You know, we're in the month of August and it's supposed to be transition transitionary time, but those fish are not transitioning yet, are they? I don't think transition fishing's begun. I think we've got a little ways to go. In fact, a lot of the spots that are hot right now have been hot all summer long. An early morning trip is your best bet this weekend. The bite slows down as temperatures heat up. Afternoon storms are also frequent. If you can get into Black Bay and Battledore Reef, the rigs there continue to hold good trout. School trout can be found around Stone Island and better fish on the nearby rigs. The Bay Elwha rigs are holding fish, just look for clean water. In Lake Bourne, the rocks at Bayou St. Malo are holding a mixture of speck, red, and drum. That seagull. Further north, Flatboat Key still has pretty trout. There are reports of triple tail showing up in the lake, but most are close to Mississippi. So far we've shown you where to fish and exactly what to use when you get there, but there's one place guaranteed to always have perfect fish every time. <laughs> yeah, my, my, uh, my rumbling tummy says uh, we're headed down to the French Quarter, see GW Finn's restaurant, and see what Chef Tenny Flynn has in the kitchen. Today, Parmesan cheese and crusted trout. Delicious. Fantastic. Summertime in New Orleans means speckled trout, and usually a lot of speckled trout. This is a very simple dish, as a lot of the best ones are. We've got speckled trout. I'm going to season it very lightly with a little salt and pepper. Um, 
I'm also going to spray it with this vegetable spray, which is like Pam, uh, you know, be canola oil, olive oil, whatever. I'm going to put a pretty good coating of spray on it. And then I'm going to dredge it right into Parmesan cheese, just grated Parmesan cheese. Press it down and get a good coating. And see how it's evenly coated. I've got a mixture of clarified butter and canola oil here. Straight canola oil would work just as well. I'm going to put a fair amount in my pan that's already hot and I'm going to put the fish cheese side down. And it's very important that we don't try to turn this for three or four minutes until it's almost done. Let's see if we did this right. Now the, the pancake analogy we use sometimes with the fish that the first side of the pancake takes longer than the second side is certainly true with this. And I'm going to lean the skillet so I don't splash myself. My spatula is too big for my pan almost. Okay, so you can see the golden brown cheese crust. Now this is only going to take about two minutes to finish cooking on this side. All right, we're done. I'm going to plate this and then we're going to make a little fresh brown butter very quickly. And we're going to brown a little piece of butter, about a tablespoon. And instead of squeezing lemon juice, we've got some, uh, some little fillets of lemon, which is a little bit fancier. Um, and I'm going to cook those for a second in the butter. But those are just a little, like when you section a grapefruit, and we're doing it with a lemon. And I've got some chopped parsley, and I've got some capers that are already fried. All right, that's ready to go. I don't know if you can see the color. Parsley, lemon, capers. Swirl it around one time, and then right over the top of the fish. And that's Parmesan crusted speckled trout with lemon fillets and brown butter from GW Fence. Thought I've been working with Tenny for a long time, and, and, and I think it shows. But this was your first trip into the kitchen. What'd you think? Well, CT is definitely one of the perks of the new gig. <laughs> but of course, we have a whole lot of work left to do. And, you know, ultimatefishfinder.com is an outstanding website, but we're working every day to make it even better. Yeah, and don't forget to check out the Thursday Night Big Fish Report and the Friday morning Fox 8 News, Fox 8 Fish Finder. And that's just the beginning. We're finding more and more ways to put you on fish fast. We want to hear from you. If you have any comments, critiques, or suggestions, send them to Todd. Or accolades and praise, we well, can send those to me. And you can get either one of us at ultimatefishfinder at gmail.com. And until next week, go check out ultimatefishfinder.com. We're early in the game, but there's already a lot of great information up on the site. And if we don't see you on the water, we hope to see you right back here next week. Thanks for watching.
Summertime in New Orleans means speckled trout and usually a lot of speckled trout. This is a very simple dish as a lot of the best ones are. We've got speckled trout. I'm going to season it very lightly with a little salt and pepper. Um, I'm also going to spray it with this vegetable spray which is like Pam, uh, you know, be canola oil, olive oil, whatever. I'm going to put a pretty good coating of spray on it and then I'm going to dredge it right into Parmesan cheese, just grated Parmesan cheese. Press it down and get a good coating. And see how it's evenly coated. I've got a mixture of clarified butter and canola oil here. Straight canola oil would work just as well. I'm going to put a fair amount in my pan that's already hot and I'm going to put the fish cheese side down. And it's very important that we don't try to turn this for three or four minutes until it's almost done. All right, we're going to see if we did this right. Now the, the pancake analogy we use sometimes with the fish that the first side of the pancake takes longer than the second side is certainly true with this. And I'm going to lean the Kill it so I don't splash myself. My spatula is too big for my pan almost. Okay, so you can see the golden brown cheese crust. Now this is only going to take about two minutes to finish cooking on this side. All right, we're done. I'm going to plate this and then we're going to make a little fresh brown butter very quickly. And we're going to brown a little piece of butter, about a tablespoon. And instead of squeezing lemon juice, we've got some, uh, some little fillets of lemon, which is a little bit fancier. Um, and I'm going to cook those for a second in the butter, but those are just the little, like when you section a grapefruit when we're doing it with a lemon. And I've got some chopped parsley, and I've got some capers that are already fried. All right, that's ready to go. I don't know if you can see the color. But parsley, lemon, capers. Swirl it around one time and then right over the top of the fish. And that's Parmesan crusted speckled trout with lemon fillets and brown butter from GW Fence. GW Fence is a great restaurant with dinner items so fresh they print a new menu daily.